In this video, I'm going to show you how you can use the brand new Roto Brush 3 inside of Adobe After Effects to add text behind somebody in your footage. So let's get into it. Now, before we jump into After Effects and begin with this, I just want to say this is not exclusive to the new update. So if you've got Roto Brush 1 or 2, this technique is the same. Although there have been vast improvements made to Rotor Brush 3 as opposed to 2 and 1. So 3 is going to be a lot more accurate. So if you can, I would definitely recommend upgrading your After Effects to get the latest version. I'm on version 24 at the moment, and this has given me access to Rotor Brush 3. But again, you can use Rotor Brush 2 or 1 with this technique. So as you can see, I've got my footage. You can see there's clearly a subject and there's clearly a background. So I want to split these and place text between these. So to do that, we are going to go up to the Roto Brush tool here, click that, double click your video, and now we are in the Roto Brush selection window. And now we can go ahead and make our selection. But before we do that, we want to make sure we can see the brushes window. If you can't see that, then go up to window and go down to brushes and make sure that is ticked. Brushes is going to allow you to change the size of your brush. Now in my example, my arms are down. There's no real need for a fine brush to get that detail. So I can go for a larger diameter brush and just paint within myself like this. Now you'll notice at this point, we've got this yellow banner up here. This says frame rate mismatch or footage with feels round for best rotor brush and refine edge result, set the composition to 25 to match the layer source. So it's really important that your sequence or your composition and your footage are matching in settings. So my composition is set to 30 FPS, whereas my footage is 25. So before I carry on any further, I'm going to go back to composition 01, I'm going to go to composition, composition settings, and I'm going to match this so that my frame rate is now 25 and press OK. So now when we go back, so we go to the rotor brush icon, double click. Now we'll scroll back to the very beginning. I'm going to paint over myself again. And now you'll notice this time, once I've completed the selection, that has now created this outline. So it's really important to match your composition and your footage. Now, if you're on Mac, you are going to want to hold Option. If you are on Windows, I believe it is Alt, but you want to hold that down and you'll notice your brush is going to turn red. This is going to remove parts. So this bit was clearly background, so I can remove that bit. I want to add my arm back in here. I want to add the side of my face back in here. And essentially, once you've done this first frame, you want to go in and make any corrections to any imperfections. And once you're happy with that, you can press play. And then After Effects is going to take the time to go through this frame by frame and apply the Roto Brush. Now you'll notice because this is Roto Brush V3, so version three, you can see this is doing a really good job at keeping with myself. On Roto Brush one or two, this might be skipping around a little bit more. There may be more artifacts and you would have to go in and make those corrections. So you would go frame by frame to adjust any bits. So maybe it would add this part of the background in. In that case, you would need to get rid of that and then add the shoulder back in. But with version three, you can see it's done a really good and clean job. If I go back to the main composition window and play this back, you can see just how much of a good job this has done. Now you will notice though that my hair and my beard here, there's a weird harsh line around them. And this is where we would go back into Roto Brush and rather than using the Roto Brush, we would now use the Refine Edge tool. So we'll click back in, go to the very beginning, we'll increase the diameter on the brush and then we'll just go around my beard and the top of my hair. So the Refine Edge tool is very good for hair or any fabric. So if you've got a cotton jumper on and there's a little bit of texture coming off that, Refine Edge is going to do a great job of that. Any beard hair, any frizzy hair, anything like that, the Refine Edge tool is really going to help to clean that up and separate subject and background. Of course, if you're wearing a hat and your clothing isn't fluffy in the slightest, then you don't need to do this. But if you have got any hair or frizz that you need to get rid of, then the Refine Edge tool is how you would do that. And there we go. You can see After Effects has now completed that and that looks pretty good. So if we go back to composition comp one, you can see that now looks a lot tidier. Of course, though, at the moment we are missing the background. We want to add text behind the person. So in order to do that, we want to just copy that footage. So we'll go command C, command V, go to the bottom layer and delete rotor brush and refine edge. So now that I've deleted that, you can see we have now got our original footage back. But the great thing is if we turn that off, you can see we still have our subject separated. So now we can put anything we like between our subject and our background. So we've 
chop our subject out of the frame, move them forward technically, and then we're going to place something in between. We're going to sandwich that. So if we go to the T icon and we type out some text, we can go to the character window and make this pretty, but that's not what this tutorial is about. So I'm just going to leave it as this. You'll notice if it is sitting on top, then it's not going to do anything. But when you move it beneath the top layer and the bottom layer, you'll see that text is now sitting behind myself. And it doesn't matter where this goes, you'll see this is still going to be behind because we were using the rotor brush tool to remove the whole subject. So if you wanted to add some graphics behind them, you could do that. If you wanted to add a little bit of color, so we'll go layer new solid. I select a nice color, so something like that. We'll position this beneath them again. And as you can see, we've actually just changed the background by using the rotor brush tool. And that actually looks really clean. This wouldn't be possible with rotor brush one or two. It would look too messy, but this looks like I could have been on a green screen. Again, though, that's not quite the effect that we're going for. So if I go to the pen tool and I just create a mask around the bottom of the frame and then I place this text on top of that and then move that down there. You can see this is one use case that we could do. There's a lot that we could do here, but essentially because we've used the rotor brush tool to remove the subject from the background, we can place anything we like between those two elements now. So any motion graphics, any animation, any text, anything you want can go in between those now. And like I mentioned before, this is not exclusive for the recent update on After Effects. You can do this with Rotor Brush 1 and 2, but Rotor Brush 3 is much more powerful and will do a much cleaner job. There is no way that Rotor Brush 1 or 2 would be able to do this clean of a job. You can see if I zoom into the edge, there are no artifacts, there's no frizziness, there's no blurring. It's a really clean, sharp edge. And this looks like it could have been filmed on a green screen or a blue screen and then keyed. It looks really clean. So there you go. That is how you rotoscope somebody out of your video footage and place text or elements behind them to separate the foreground and the background. And this is also a very quick insight into Rotobrush version three and how powerful this new update is. So thank you ever so much for watching this video. If you found this useful, then please consider checking out some of my other videos just up here. And hopefully I will see you on that future. And hopefully I will see you on a future video. See you there.